couple of points to think of before we start to draw architecture, whether it's a relatively simple example or a more complex one, is to look for the perspective angles, to look at these sloping lines, to see where they are and how much they slope. We're not talking about this line because this is the slope of the ground. But what we see is that this line slopes down slightly, this line more, this line more, this line slopes more, and the tops of the chimneys slope at even a higher angle. And that's the pattern we need to remember. As horizontal lines move above the level of the camera or the person looking, they increase in angle. The other important thing is that as things move away in this direction, they become compressed. And then ask, are there any details here that I need to be conscious of when I draw? And in this drawing, I would say the fact that this does not line up with this. This lines up with this. But there's not much of that, which makes it harder to see. In fact, I find it helpful when things such as corners are not very clear to actually draw them onto my reference. And now it's clear that what we see here is this on the other side. In any drawing, and that includes architecture, we want to get a sense of distance. We want to get a sense that this shrub here is further away than this one here, and that there is a progression of closer to further. And that happens in the architecture as well. The other question we need to ask is how much detail do I want to draw? Generally, it's a mistake beginners make to try and draw too much detail. We can have so many black lines on our paper that we see the lines rather than the object. Only go beyond suggesting the detail if we feel it really needs to. And we have to remember whenever we have bushes or trees that they're not an afterthought. We need to give as much effort into thinking and as much concentration into accuracy as we do for anything we draw in our scene. So let's get started. Working out where to start is always important. I think the answer is start in the place that makes sense for each particular scene. And particularly, that is where you can draw with some level of accuracy for whatever is going to be around that starting point. Now, I thought this corner line and then the shrub underneath it, because I really need to establish that line of shrubs, because every vertical line from the building that comes down towards the ground needs to end before it reaches that. When we draw directly in pen, avoiding prematurely putting lines and marks on the paper that aren't where we want them is part of what we do. But learning how to put marks that can be non-committal and help guide us, but equally, if they finish up not being, if you like, used, then they're not very obvious much or at all. I'm getting this front corner done. Now, you'll notice I've put the tape around the outside of my drawing area. Sometimes I do that because lots of lines are going to cross over the edge and I want to keep it looking neat, but that's not really the case in this drawing. I'm doing it more here because drawing something the same size as our reference is a much easier way for beginners to tackle all the challenges of a scene, particularly keeping things in proportion. And that also means I can align where a certain point of the drawing subject is with where it is in relation to the edge of the photo. And so I've got that edge marked by tape. It can help me position a line more accurately. I move out with this side wall of the porch coming out. I put the window in now because that helps me work out how wide do I want the wall. It just helps me see the proportions better. Sometimes we should put details in sooner rather than later if they help us work out the overall dimensions. And for the same reason, I did this front uh, window, or it's actually a doorway that goes down behind the bushes because it helped me work out the widths of the brickwork on each side of the door more accurately. Now I've got the pitched roof. There I go, I often measure by alignment. So I wanted to see where that angled porch roof ridge stopped and I aligned it with what was under it in the reference, which was the edge, the left side edge of 
that closest window. So now I've just got this small detail down here. Now I talked in the intro about the need to spend as much time as is necessary to do a good job with the shrubs and trees and the like. And in this scene, I spent more time on the shrubs and the trees and the ground than I did on the house. It's actually a church building. I'm not sure if it was a hall or perhaps it was where the priests live a long time ago. And you might see me use my pen. I hold my pen against angles and then just slide it across onto my drawing paper and put a dot and then I'll do the same thing, repeat that to check. And then even after I've drawn a bit of a uh, light line, I might check again or I might feel confident enough to draw it in heavier. The longer the line, the more likely I am to check it a third time. And a really short one, I'm more likely just to draw straight away without measuring at all. I had placed marks for that top line, but until I put the chimney in, I couldn't actually commit to it. But again, because that's the highest perspective angle, it's a really important one to try and get angled steeply enough. And now I've got, there's a bit of decoration under the eaves of this porch area. And so I want to put those in as well. Now you'll see what I'm doing with the, with the shrubs. When we have a row of shrubs that are fairly similar such as this, it's a mistake to make them look like one long continuous shrub, unless that's what we have. With a lot of hedging, for instance, that's the effect, that it's actually one big box. But when we have clumps of a plant such as these lavender clumps, particularly when they've been recently trimmed, then we want to try and capture that roundedness and also then the sense that they're moving, individual ones moving away from us, from the centre to the left hand side. The edges we use for anything we draw are really important. We've used a straight continuous line edge for most of the, for all of the architecture pretty much. But these shrubs don't have the same edged effect in life. They have a much softer line, one that's actually hard to draw using a pen. So instead of drawing a line, I draw a series of marks to indicate the, the roundedness of the shrub, of the bush. And if I don't get it right, I can easily extend it because all of these dots are easily hidden in the rest of the drawing. And I'm doing that same thing now for all of these. And I also need to work out where the shrubs end and what's happening in that shadow because in fact there's shadow that's vertical below the shrubs but there's also shadow that's horizontal coming out from where that vertical line ends and the ground begins and so I want to capture that right angle in the way I do the shadows because that will have the bushes with a sense of sitting up off the ground rather than growing directly out of the ground. And that's the effect we want for lavender bushes. It's always about seeing the effect in our scene and working out how can I capture that effect myself. So you can see now adding these trees that are peeking around the edge. Some dark areas on corners of buildings are great. It can be helpful to make them up if they're not actually in the reference because they help define the edge of the structure that is the focal point. And they also help to push it forward a bit. And so that's a visual effect that's usually helpful for the overall visual appearance of our scene and capturing the effects in the reference that we want. So now I'm going further up to the far end. Probably some of these lines are a little bit too long and dark, but generally as I move from the closest back up there to the left to the furthest, I want to draw with lighter lines and less detail because that's to imitate the effect we have in life when shrubs move into the distance. Well, anything really follows that, that pattern. Now, I'm doing darker hatching though for this end uh, bush. I think it's a little cypress pine or something. Because, partly because it highlights the end 
of the row of lavender bushes in front of the, the, the building, and also the fact that it's a different bush. And so visually it works, works well. So I'm trying as I go along, have less detail, lighter lines, and I should have smaller lines as well, simply because things are getting smaller as they move further away. And now there's a bush tree that I almost missed coming over the top. And that's the sort of detail, well, really any detail, but particularly that detail, if, if I don't think it looks any good, I don't need to draw it. The photo is a reference for us. Now, this is where I make a big mistake and I didn't listen to my advice about not putting too much detail in because I wasn't really paying enough attention, which can happen at the end, and I didn't angle those lines correctly because I started at the side where the, the left-hand side, which was uh, not the angle that my lines were going to follow. My lines were going to follow the angle on the right-hand side, the side of the building, and having started at the other, it misled me visually enough to have me not angle them steeply enough. And then when I went to put a heavier line on to mark where some of the sheets join, I realized straight away it was wrong, but there really wasn't much I could do. So there you go. I could have redrawn it, but people seem to like it when they can see the mistakes I make as well. We really need to keep our attention up right to the end. And even which side I started doing the lines gave me a greater chance of success, or in this case, not. And now there's this, I think it's a, a fairly young cedar of Lebanon, which would make sense because it's a very old Catholic church, getting close to 200 years on in Tasmania. And this is the sort of tree they like to plant around churches in those days. I think we're pretty close to being done. A few, a few dots for gravel on the driveway, give it a bit of foreground, and then we're pretty much done. What do you think? Why not have a go drawing this yourself? I'll put this reference on my channel community page. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. I hope you have a go drawing this, but in the end, whatever you draw, however you draw it, and however it turns out, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.